Hi everyone, I'm Carly. This is Zudu Virtual Ground. How are we doing everyone? Darcy says frozen, but I'm still streaming. So this is Kumani. This is Kessie and <laughs> making an entrance. And we'll see if Kumani kind of goes back for her daughter. This is the most independent I've seen Kessie in more than a year. So right now Tenley is target training with Kumani. Is Kessie still too young to train? Shayla? Um, she's actually started training with mom. So she doesn't necessarily train on her own, but she'll start to mimic. So for example, we'll do, um, we'll ask for hand from Kumani and she started to mimic it or stand behaviors, which is really cute. She's going to be very smart. She really is. Hi to Ethan, Luke and Lydia. Hi to everyone who's joining us. If you're watching right now, Kessie. She does exist outside of being attached to mom, Kumani. Uh, she's getting more and more independent every day. She turned one year old on May 10th. So she's almost at 14 months. Hope you can see better now, Darcy. So she's enjoying some tree time. Is this a very arboreal species of primate? Um, they're actually semi-terrestrial. So basically that means that they'll um, spend a lot of time down on the ground because these guys are big foragers, but they also love to go up in the trees. Mainly it's the females who will go up in the trees because they're a bunch smaller than the males. <laughs> so what behaviors are we training with Kumani? So she has quite a few different behaviors. So you see the open behavior right now. We use that. I'm sure most of you guys go to the dentist. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really good way for us to look into their mouths so that we can make sure that all of their teeth look okay. So basically all of the behaviors that we're asking um, help us better take care of these guys. Um, Kumani, for example, is doing chest right now. It's a good way for us to check um, and make sure all of uh, her chest looks okay. We can even train ultrasounds. So Kumani, we were able to train an ultrasound behavior and we could see Kessie while she was still inside Aww, of mom. Very cool. That maternal healthcare behavior, not one that all of our animals have. So being able to ultrasound, confirm pregnancy is very, very cool. How old is Kumani? Kumani is 10 years old. So she's um, not quite the youngest besides Cassie, but the second youngest. The second youngest. What is the average lifespan of, uh, of a mandrel? So these guys um, in a zoo setting can live uh, into their 30s, 40s, and there's even been some mandrels that make it up into their 50s. Oh, wow. So all of the mandrels that we hear, have here at Denver Zoo um, are still right in their prime. Our oldest is um, 16 years old. That is too key. Oh. So, oh my gosh, here comes Kessie. And let's see, mom doesn't seem like she's rushing over to go get her. When did we first start seeing those signs of independence from Kessie? Um, so we actually started seeing some of it about a month ago. And then about a week before the public came back, um, we saw Kessie exploring one of the other exhibits for just a couple minutes. And then this week, <laughs> that's helpful. Oh, uh, and that's what happened. happened. Um, we've seen it uh, where she's been off for even 15, 20 plus minutes, which is really exciting. So this wasn't the longest stretch. Hi to Lala, Nate and Zach, Josiah and Zechariah. Hi to Cindy from Oregon. Thanks everyone for tuning in. So now Kumani's like, oh, I got her back. <laughs> this, is, yep. this is a probably a much more familiar sight for a lot of our guests. Kumani holding very tightly on to Kessie. When we do lives with other uh, newborns like Juna and babies, everyone says, why is, why are these moms so much more cool with their kids yeah. having independence than, than Kumani and Kessie? We always say that Kumani is a little bit of a helicopter mom. It is her, um, <laughs> first kiddo so you know she's just learning how to be a good mom and I think for her she thinks it is being constantly attached but <laughs> the longer uh you know the more time that goes by we can tell that Kumani is actually getting really comfortable yeah she'll even let Cassie off um when she's with the male or with um the other female so it just sort of is dependent on if she's maybe a little bit tired for the day tired of holding on for the day was Kessie just mimicking Tenley's uh, motion to touch the chest? That was pretty cute. Yes. Hi, Bella. So it's probably a little bit harder to target train <laughs> when you only have the one arm. Let's see if Kumani will respond. She'll get a, 
a reward, a treat if she responds to the target with the correct hand. <laughs> She's trying to gain the system. She'll just shift over to the right <laughs> instead of letting go of her right hand. Lydia wants to know what are the predators of mandrels? Oh, so these guys are found over in Africa. So um, one of the only predators that you really see are leopards. And then actually their biggest reason of why um, uh, they're listed as vulnerable is actually from people. So um, there's mining that goes on over in that region where they're mining for coltan. Um, and uh, habitat destruction is also another one. Um, you know, so they're losing a lot of the places that uh, they normally would live out in the wild. And these guys out in the wild can have really, really large groups. There can actually be up to 800 plus individuals in a massive, they call it a horde, so. A horde, that sounds accurate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and how many mandrels do we have at Denver Zoo? We have, I always have to count because I always forget Cassie <laughs> somehow, but she is her own little person. So we have six here at uh, Denver Zoo and only one male. So the rest are all female. So let me see if I can, we have Kumani, Cassie, yep. Ruby, yep. Tuki, Saba, yep. and uh, Jelani. Yep, all that's right. right. Shannon wants to know, can they see at night? Um, so they don't have really any special adaptations to be able to see at night. These guys are... Um, going to be uh, awake mainly and foraging in the morning. They'll rest a little bit in the afternoon and then forage a little bit more. So normally at nighttime, they're gonna sleep just like we would. So they don't really need to have really good eyesight. Very cool. Daphne wants to know, what do they like to eat? Oh, great question. Um, so these guys out in the wild, they eat a whole bunch of different stuff. So they are going to be omnivorous, meaning they eat plants as well as some types of animals. So. They will forage and find things like even like frogs, they'll eat insects, um, bird eggs, and then they love to chew on tree roots, they'll eat seeds, they'll eat fruits as well. So, and right now the training treat that these guys are getting are some peanuts. Some peanuts, very fun. I know sometimes we put popcorn in the exhibit yes. to encourage that foraging behavior. Is that how mandrels find most of their food through foraging? That is 100% correct. So they actually have specific muscles in their forearms so that they are amazing at foraging. I mean, most of the time when you come here at the zoo, they're gonna be spending a ton of their time digging through the mulch, looking for bugs, looking for other little morsels of things that they might've missed um, earlier. It's kind of like when you have a gift bag and you're just like searching the bottom. Yeah. Like, is anything else <laughs> left in there? I don't know. Keep sending those questions for mandrels. Uh, hi, Shannon. So baby was born May 10th of last year, so almost 14 months old. And how long will Cassie stay with mom? Um, so at this point, normally the females would actually stay in with the group. Once again, they can live in really, really big groups or troops, as we would say, too. Um, so as far as we know, Cassie will probably stay with us for um quite a little while these guys are don't really reach full grown until they're five or six years old so you have plenty of time yes to so come she, see cassie yep she won't even get right now she has a really really dark face so she really won't start to develop even the full colors until gosh sometimes around two or three years old yeah um nate loves to talk about enrichment he wants to know what every animal's favorite enrichment Ooh. is so i think mandrels are a great one to talk about enrichment because I don't know if you can see, Nate, they have fire hoses, we have barrels, we have ropes. They like a lot of stuff. So what do you think is their favorite? Shayla? Oh, I love that question. So each of these guys as individuals also have their own favorites. For example, Ruby, she absolutely adores chalk. She will rub it all over herself. Sometimes you come <laughs> into a pink or a blue mandrel in the morning. Um, she also really loves to shred paper um, and shredding. These guys all love to have brows. They'll chew on the sticks. Um, Kessie is awesome right now because she just wants to touch and play with everything. <laughs> um, and then I think too, another one of their favorites is anything that is food related mm. uh, that might go into a puzzle feeder. So we have stacking PVC puzzles. We have other ones where they have to roll around the cylinder to get, um, uh, you know, bugs or different treats out of it. So they love all of that. They are very fun to enrich. What about the mirror? Oh, the mirror. Yes, Kumani loves mirrors. Uh, I would say that's probably her favorite. So um, these guys are very territorial. So they like to look in the mirror and then basically sort of talk to himself and say, <laughs> hey, this is my area. Um, 
and it gets Kessie really excited too. So they're both really cute and we'll both, uh, they love interacting with those mirrors. So fun. Alessandro um, is asking what is our newest uh, exhibit. That would be Stingray Cove, but you'll see that after you come through and see the mandrels. Um, let's see. Dominic says, is this the same animal, animal as Rafiki? Yes, it King. is. So um, it's interesting. If you've watched the new live action uh, Lion King movie with Rafiki, that Rafiki is correct because these guys don't have those super long tails. Um, they do have tails. Kessie has a really big tail right now. It's cute. <laughs> it does. Um, so they do have little bitty tails. Uh, so it still makes them a monkey. Um, but yes, they are like Rafiki. Very cool. And a couple people, I think they get confused that they're looking at our habitat with Jelani in it. They assume that the females are babies because they're so much smaller. Is there a reason why um, the males are so much larger? Yeah, so uh, in this case, it's basically called sexual dimorphism. So what that means is there's just a difference um, in size. So males are always going to be almost, gosh, ha <laughs> twice as big, or even the females can be a third of the size of a male. Um, those males have to uh, be able to protect their ladies and protect their territory. So they need to be big and buff and strong. Whereas the females, um, they're used to living all together and they have those males to normally protect them. Yeah, uh, yes. And the males have the much more brightly blue, red face. Yes. Um, a lot of people always assume mandrels are closely related to baboons because yeah. of their rear ends. Are they? So they actually used to be classified in the same group as baboons, but upon further scientific research, they actually found that mandrels um, are sort of a separate group. And they are um, closely re related to drills, if you've ever heard of a drill. I have not heard of a drill. I'll have to look that up. Uh, Kumani just kind of yeeted Cassie up that wall and <laughs> says, maybe that's it for us today. I'm done training. I'm done hanging out for treats. We did just scatter, I believe it was sunflower seeds. Yep, sunflower seeds. So hopefully they'll kind of stay and forge a little more. Cassie's gotten big enough that she can kind of pull mom where she wants to go. She says, you know. You might be holding on to me, but I'm going to be telling you where we go. Uh, hi, Jasmine. No, we actually have a third in this half of the habitat right now. This is Ruby. And then we have three others, a male, Jelani, and uh, Tuki and Saba. Are they sisters? They are sisters. Yeah. So um, Tuki is 16 and Saba is right behind her at 15 years old. Do you want to explain why we don't house them all together? Yes, yeah, so good has an awesome point to bring up. So what we actually do is Jelani every day gets to pick what ladies he gets to hang out with. Ooh. Um, so he has, he has his day made. Um, basically what happens though is Saba is a very dominant female and also sometimes does not get along with other females quite as well. So she's always lived with Tuki um, on and off throughout her time here at Denver Zoo because they were born here. Um, however, with her not getting along great with females, um, we keep them separate. So mm -hmm. Jelani just gets to bounce back and forth between these guys. It's like the bachelor to decide a date card under one of the girls' yes. doors every morning. <laughs> yes, he gives big old smiles and we'll be like, okay, you want to go with Saba today? Okay. That sounds like the life that Jelani <laughs> yes. has. Luke says, uh, what do they sound like? Oh, man, they have so many different vocalizations. Tinley, you want to make one of them? Oh, I can <laughs> So they'll make a sound that we like to call the chicken call. Um, that can be a sign of excitement. Oftentimes um, when keepers are coming to feed um, lunch or sometimes dinner, you'll hear them call because they're getting excited. Um, and they, some <laughs> they sometimes also will um, make that chicken call if they're looking for one another. Oh. There's a lot of grunting for these guys. Um, the grunting it can sort of be a warning. Um, and then they're just overall expressive as well. So uh, when they're upset, they'll actually have the top of their hair on the back of their head raises up and they'll stare right at you. And that's sort of like a, hey, I'm not very happy with you right now. You better back up. So we're watching Ruby get trained right now. It's cool getting yes. a glimpse of their teeth. I don't think I've ever seen them that close. Yes, not quite as big as the males, but they still can do quite a bit of damage. They can be aggressive animals. Yes. Um, let's see, Alicia says, in many children's books, they show a photo of an ape or a chimp and call it a monkey. 
Is it correct that, correct that apes don't have long tails and monkeys have long tails that they can wrap around branches? So that is almost correct. So apes don't actually have any tail at all. So chimpanzees, gorillas, bonobos, orangutans, they don't have tails. Um, gibbons. And gibbons, yep. yep. Gibbons are lesser apes. They don't have tails. Our siming doesn't have a tail. And then you know it's a monkey if they do have a tail. Now, for mandrills, you can see that tiny tail won't actually wrap around anything. Um, you're probably thinking more of like a spider monkey. So mm -hmm. spider monkeys have prehensile tails, same as the capuchins. That's awesome because it acts like a fifth arm almost. Um, I'm super jealous. I would love, <laughs> I would love to have a prehensile tail. Um, but yeah, it, as long as they have even a tiny little stub like a mandrill, they are uh, considered a monkey. Now let's see if you all can see that little tuft of fur right on her backside. <laughs> that is Ruby's tail. And all the ladies have just one like, and now we're just getting a full view. Thanks, Ruby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks great. Um, when they're ready to mate or reproduce, does anything change? What kind of signals do they give to Jelani? Yeah, so these guys actually get their big old booty will get super uh, almost big and red. And that's a really good visual indication to say like, hey, like I'm ready to breed right now. Um, they'll also uh, almost like uh, we call it presenting. So mm -hmm. they back up towards him and saying like, hey, like, OK, I'm OK with this. Um, <laughs> Jelani also uh, can be very flirty, so he likes to smile at the ladies, and um, you know that that's really good behavior that we see from them. <laughs> Heather G wants to know why do you train these cool mandrels? Oh, Heather! Well, we train these cool animals like we train all of our animals here at Denver Zoo. Um, a lot of the behaviors that we're asking are basically going to be for medical purposes. It makes our job a lot easier. Um, if they're willing to participate voluntarily in their um, training for these medical things. <laughs> then we don't have to always take them up to the vet if we need to look at something. We can position them in different ways. Um, and the awesome part is they do it voluntarily. So if they ever don't want to participate, we don't make them. Um, they just get a special treat if they do decide to participate. Yeah, Ruby could just go off right now, play, yeah. swing, do whatever she wants. but. She enjoys training. I, I think this might be Tenley's mom saying, so good to see you at work. <laughs> it's very sweet. Love when the parents tune in to watch. Who do you think is easiest to train and who's hardest? Oh, I would say that Ruby is the easiest to train. She loves training and she really picks up on things really quickly. The hardest to train, um, it is very difficult to train Kumani while she has one arm <laughs> occupied with a child, um, but she's normally a pretty good trainer. Sometimes it's Jelani though. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jelani has a lot on his mind. He needs to keep watch of all of his ladies um, and all of that stuff. So it definitely takes a lot more time with him. And Tuki, I guess too, is very shy. Yeah, Tuki. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've actually been trying to, uh, she's diabetic, so we've been trying to train her to take insulin for quite a while, but we go at the animal's paces um, to make them more comfortable. So, you know, we'll just keep trucking. Uh, Emily asks, what is the easiest way to tell Tuki and Saba apart? Oh, easiest way. So, Everyone says Tuki is the pretty one. I always say she's a little bit more of a bowling ball shape. Oh. Um, <laughs> she's a little bit more on the rounder side. Um, and then Saba, um, she's just a really pretty mandrel she. <laughs> she has a really bright nose. Um, Tuki also um, has a little bit less hair on her forearms mm. than Saba does. And I think between these two, if I had to say from like a layman's perspective, I think Ruby's face is a little bit brighter colored yes. and Kumani's is still pretty dark. Yes. And then Kumani also has a, a fifth arm um, <laughs> in Kessie. <laughs> so. Yep. That's a hundred percent correct. Kumani just for no reason at all, just her genetics and stuff just has a darker nose than mm -hmm. the other ones. So that's an easy way to tell these two apart when they're in here. And then if you're trying to tell which troop you're looking at. If you see little Cassie, you know you're looking at Ruby and Kumani. Yep, that's 100% correct. Um, let's see, uh, Alicia wants to know, can Mandrel swim? Can Mandrel swim? I don't know that that's normally a natural behavior that these guys would do. They're normally in the really, really deep rainforest. Um, they do like to get their toes wet every once in a while and Ruby 
For example, we provide them with misters when it's hot out and she will go and sit in the mister for two hours and come in completely soaked. But I don't think that these guys would be very good swimmers at all. In general, I don't know if many of the primates we have here at Denver Zoo are good swimmers. The gibbons don't like water at all. That's why they can be on that mm -hmm. tech pavilion. Uh, the orangs. There are some types of uh, Gwinnins, I believe, that will actually go and swim. Um, one of our Debraza monkeys at one point um, was a swimmer and he liked to swim. But yeah, for the most part, none of these guys are really big swimmers. Christina wants to know, does Jelani ever get agitated with having his ladies in separate habitats? <laughs> he does, yes. He, um, as much as we try to give them all, um, sometimes he just can't have it all. And he doesn't quite understand that sometimes. <laughs> Um, but we are super uh, flexible here in this um, area. So say at lunchtime, you know, in the morning he wants to be with Tuki and Saba and at lunchtime he says, hey, Ruby's looking really pretty over there. <laughs> we are totally able to switch him around to try and keep him as happy as can be. Shannon wants to know how high they can climb. Oh man, they can climb all the way to the top of the mesh. I mean, Ke yeah, Kessie yeah. was a good example earlier. Um, oftentimes, if you can't see any mandrels on the ground, the girls love to just sit in the trees. Mm. Um, and they can jump pretty high, too. I don't know the exact height that they can jump to, but pretty far. So, Shannon, they'll climb as high as they have the room to, and that's why we have an enclosed mesh top on this habitat, because they can just keep going, and we don't want them to get out of here. No. <laughs> but it's fun, uh, enrichment, kind of physical exercise for them to be doing that climbing. Um... Tabitha wants to know, do mandrels prefer slash have a stronger bond with some keepers over others? Um, they can, yes. That's a really great question. Um, we spend a lot of time relationship building with these animals um, so that we can gain trust and stuff. And so Ruby is a really good example. Um, if you don't put the time in with her, she can be a little bit sassy. Um, and she still can be sassy with us, but if you put a lot of time in, you can really gain that mutual respect. Um, uh, so yeah, it's basically how much time you are willing to put in. And we put in a lot of time doing that. Yeah, uh, Marcella wants to know, do squirrels ever enter their habitat with Jelani attack? Um, Jelani isn't as likely to attack as the girls. So actually I was watching the other day and Kumani found a squirrel and her and Kessie took off after it. Oh. Um, and I don't think that they would eat them or anything, but you know, it's once again, it's their territory. You know, they see a squirrel taking some of their food. They're probably not going to be very happy about it. Does Kessie still nurse? Uh, she doesn't nurse, we don't think, but she does have a habit of she will still um, actually latch onto the nipple, maybe as a comfort technique or something like that. Um, these guys normally stop nursing around one year. So, but she's getting her full diet now from, yes. from solids and keeper feedings. Oh, there she is. I'm going to do my last call for questions. Time flies when you're watching mandrels. <laughs> um, but so if you have any more questions about the three you're looking at, Ruby, Kumani, Cassie, our mandrel troop in general, or mandrels in general. They're such a unique, interesting species and so fun. Shayla, what's your favorite part about working with mandrels? Oh, I love their personalities. They're just very intelligent um, and they're very expressive. I think I can say for Tenley too, like when a mandrel smiles at you, you know that you've earned their respect and you know they're happy with the job that you did for the day and that just makes you feel really good about your day. Yeah. What's your favorite part, Tenley? I agree. Like, I think it takes that trust, like Shayla was talking about. You really have to spend time with them to earn their trust. And I love their sassiness. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when they smile at you, it just melts my heart and it knows I'm doing my job well. Very cool. Shannon, so they don't have claws. They have hands just like you and I do. Um, are their fingers really long? It's kind of hard to tell from here, but when they get up close, you, they have fingernails. They have their knuckles. Yes, they do. They have um, same sort of hand structure as ours. They have those thumbs that are opposable, all of that good stuff. So um, I would say it's a pretty proportionate hand and compared to like a human hand a little bit. Their thumb is probably just a little bit smaller though. On their feet, they have more of a big toe or more of like a foot thumb? 
<laughs> it's like a foot thumb. You can, like, Kamani was just. Uh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Yep. It's like so a that, feet. Yep, the feet thumb definitely comes way farther um, down than what our hands would look like. So their hands, I guess, are more, you know, similar to ours, and their feet are definitely more monkey like. So cool to see. <laughs> um, Let's see. So you said their closest relative is the drill? Is the drill. That's correct. Interesting. What's the difference between a drill and a mandrel? Drills are a little bit smaller and they also are not as colorful. So they don't hmm. have the bright colorings as these guys. Do you have any other? I, I don't know. Like, like, yeah. Just a subspecies. Yep. <laughs> um, Alicia says, do you ever bathe them? No. Th so these guys are actually... Um, <laughs> self-sufficient so grooming is a huge social behavior that these guys do so um you'll even see kessie grooming her mom so it's picking through the hair trying to see if there's anything on there um and they're pretty good at it and if they're not getting that fulfilled from another one of the mandrels they'll do it themselves yes they will are they flexible can they like reach um it's <laughs> they're really flexible with their back legs so oftentimes if you see them scratching their neck oh. yeah they um oh <laughs> Oh. <laughs> she got a little scared. Um, if they're scratching their neck, they'll use their back foot, which is really funny. Um, they'll sometimes see them wrap their arms around, but it's yeah, their back feet do a lot of the scratching. Oh my gosh, they're so precious. Well, if that's all the questions you guys have, we're going to wrap it up then. Thank you so much for joining us for another Zoo to You virtual safari. We had to really kind of zoom through the intros today <laughs> because we wanted to catch Kessie being an adventurous independent little gal and she really was there for a few minutes and then she had to jump in on mom's training and come on he said well that's the end of that so thank you so much to shayla and tenley for answering your questions and making sure the mandrels were nice and up close so that we could see them uh sarah formberg says hey shayla thank you yeah. <laughs> so thank you to everyone for your awesome questions and comments we love when you tune in we love bring uh bringing these to you oh Let's see. I'll, I'll see if we can answer this one for Christina. She says, what is the largest troop in zoos that you know of? Ooh. This might have stumped him. I have to think about it. How many did they have at Disney? Oh, yeah, Disney? Disney usually has a big mandrel population. Yeah, because they have multiple groups, which would probably be... How many did they have? A lot? More than 12? Probably. More than 12. All right. So that's a pretty big number. That's probably a lot of work for those keepers. So thank you to everyone. Bye to Nate and Zach and Shannon, Alicia. Thanks, everyone. We will see you tomorrow.